His ship is in the harbor, now see if you can spot him Another immigrant coming up from the bottom Me, I fought with him Me, I died for him Me, I loved him Me, I blew him in an alleyway for 30 bucks Cause I needed the money for ink I was running low this There is a price on my head done. in Williamsburg, Virginia Just Someone please wait. watch over my livestock They're all gay Alexander Hamilton Get ready for the Velvet Variety Show Just stay at home, you homos Get ready for the Gay Ass Show Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Velvet Variety I'm your host Bobby Hankinson here once again to present to you New York City queer comedy community stand-up comedy clips and weird shit they're making in quarantine as we speak We have a really special show for you tonight starting with... Incoming broadcast. It says, the producers have a message for you. What? From the people who brought you The Circle, Love is Blind, and other shows that make you wonder, hey, did Netflix plan this pandemic? Comes a new social experiment. We took the hottest people we could find in this one bedroom apartment. They're horny. They're young. They've got nowhere else to be. will crack up, who will break down, and let's not forget about that twist. For the remainder of quarantine, you will be forbidden from any kind of sexual release. Wait, isn't like masturbating? Absolutely not. Okay, what about like fraudage? No. What about docking? No. How about Fuddruckers? What even is that? What about Scattergories? Gross Bobby. What about Gloves? No. What about like... <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no. 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 Well then what are we supposed to do? Enjoy these next few clips. And don't forget to tip the performers. And follow them on social media. Using the handles that appear at the bottom of the screen. That is the I am what's known in the industry as a what? A spooky bitch. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Lane Bryant reboot of the craft, okay? That's what we're going to do. All right? It's not just Halloween. 365, my friend. Okay? Yeah. I look like I'm 20 years late to an audition for all that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Deep in the crystals, okay? Deep, you know? And that's cool now, right? Everyone's in, right? It's hashtag witch vibes on Instagram. We're doing it, right? But like some of my friends take it a little too far, okay? Some of them are a little too literal with it. A friend of mine a couple of weeks ago was like, Sarah, I'm an actual witch, okay? I have power. I am manifesting positivity. And I am expelling negativity. And I am going to curse Brian's dick until it falls off. <laughs> Okay. You do you. I think you're gonna burn some stage and fuck him again, but okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> you don't do you, you do you. Knee slap. <laughs> I am just resentful though because I'm an OG spooky bitch. I became a spooky bitch the old fashioned way by being a creepy child. Okay? I earned this, right? I did. It's not my fault. I didn't mean to be. I didn't want to be. Here's what happened. Um, <laughs> I wake up in the middle of the night from a nightmare. I'd be scared, right? I'm gonna go to my mom's room. On the way, I would forget the dream. I would lose confidence. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe I don't need to wake her up. So she would wake up to be standing there, staring at me like this. I might be scared. <laughs> Put everything, George. I don't think you put everything out there. Because we have been protecting you. We have all been protecting you. About my social distancing? About what you say about your social distancing. Because we don't say that you left the apartment. We don't say that you're still on Grindr. Or that you hooked up with, every, that guy hooked up with every guy in the neighborhood. We don't say that. But now we say it. Okay? If you can't be my friend, then please don't 
Don't be my enemy. You have to be honest. You have to be honest. It's not cool. Go talk to him. I am so fucking sick of this! Be friends, you're supposed to talk to him! I have to be his friend! I have never heard him! I have never heard him! I have no idea what he's done to me! Stop! Please, stop! Quarantine, sweet coughing, quarantine, you make me smile through the phone. Oh, hi. I'm Drew. I'm one of your hosts. I hope you're enjoying the show. <laughs> this is the best thing to wear for today. You understand. Because I don't like women in skirts. So the best thing to wear is pantyhose and a pair of pants under a short skirt, I think. Then you have the pants under the skirt. And you can pull the stockings up over the pants and underneath the skirt. And you can always take the skirt off and use it as a cape. So this is the best costume of the day. <laughs> I have to think these things up, you know. Peter wanted me to come out here in a kimono. We had quite a fight. So, hope you guys are having fun. Tip in the comics. And coming up next, we have comedy from Yaz Fest, queer comedy competition at the Broadway Comedy Club. So, enjoy. I struggle with my gender identity, but people don't believe that because I don't wear a bow tie. <laughs> uh, part of my relationship to gender is that I wish I had a dick. Uh, I think every time I jerked a guy, I was just trying to take what he had. <laughs> You can buy them at stores. Uh, I did. I bought myself a packer. Uh, if you don't know, a packer is like a soft dick and balls. Uh, it's like a sad dildo. It's like if a dildo got bullied in school. It's like if Eeyore was a dildo. Man, I feel incredible. This whole no masturbating thing is great, really, truly. It really honestly is. Today I ran three miles, I finished my pilot, I rearranged my closet, then I took apart and I put back together my PlayStation. Nathan, how do you feel? I'm doing great. As long as my hands will stop moving for more than 10 seconds, I'm fine. We've got one last thing before we go. Our final performance tonight comes from... <laughs> just hold on, just gotta... Just gotta ride the wave. Just give it a second. It'll pass. Our final performance tonight is from, it'll pass, it'll pass. Our final performance tonight 
is from my good friend and one of my favorite performers, Calvin Cato. Enjoy. I actually just went through a breakup myself, um, which sucks, thanks nobody. And <laughs> you know, sucks like I hate breaking up because you know, whenever you break up with someone and then even hearing that person's name triggers you, right? Yeah. Right? And it sucks because I didn't realize there were so many people in New York City named Daddy. And it's like. <laughs> Such a conundrum, you know? I think there's nothing in the crowd. It's like so. Ugh, I was in here Jeremiah, they still make those. And it is weird. He was like white, like very white. He was like too white, you know what I mean? He was like prairie white, you know what I mean? Like Charles Dickens novel white, you know? Like he might die of consumption white. Like it was too much. Too much. Like, there's an illustrated book about his life. Like, it was too much. But, like, he was also very woke about the issues. He was super woke. So, like, I used to call him my white woker. I thought that was real cute. <laughs> we just asked him, like, ooh, winter's coming. Like, it was, like, real cute. <laughs> he called me Khaleesi. I, uh... <laughs> Ugh. It just sucked, though, because, like, he... Like, it sucks when you get broken up with by a good person. Like, he really was a good person, despite being white. He, like... <laughs> Because he was like, he was like, works on climate change policy. That's what he did. He works on climate change policy, trying to save the environment, save the world. And like, I still do cocaine because I'm afraid of bad days. So like, I knew <laughs> I was the problem in the relationship. So like, that happened. We broke up, and then like, uh, I was hoeing around. I had a bit of a van page, and I got an STD, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sharia, and no one else. <laughs> Slut shamey ass. <laughs> has anyone ever had an STD before? Thank you. See what? Oh, thank you. Thank, I'll buy you a tequila. You earned that shit. Tequila that Clamania, hey! <laughs> like, what's her name? And she's giving her real name. She says, yeah, STDs, y'all. Can I drop that with that? Real name. Oh, you get your friend's name down <laughs> My name is Rosa. Uh, <laughs> It was wild, I, so I had something, and I had to go to a free clinic because my health insurance is prayer. It's not working out. It's not working out. I looked down, I saw something funny. I was like, "Ooh, I can't light incense." Oh no! So I went, and I had to go to City MD. Free. It was a free clinic, and I had to go, and I talked to a very rude doctor because he was like, "What are your symptoms?" And I felt like Alicia Keys because I was like, "This dick is on fire." I was pretty mad. So that happened. And then he was like, okay, you need to pee in this cup. And I was like, right in front of you, I charge $15 for that. And that's expensive. So pee in the cup, ran the results, it came back, and I had gonorrhea. Which, in case you guys don't know, gonorrhea is commonly called the clap. And gonorrhea usually comes with chlamydia, which I know they were friends. That's weird. Um, but chlamydia is commonly called the drip. And here's the thing. Why are we naming our STDs after emojis? Like, why are we doing that? Because you have to sell your past partners. And I want to send a text that's like, Hey Steve, eggplant, drip, drip, drip. That's a weird text. Please block me. Inappropriate. <laughs> but I, I fucking, I hate it. I hate being single, man. Because like, I'm like deep in my 30s and single, which is like a bad, like, I'm Disney single. Like, you know what Disney single is? Like the kind of thing where you start singing to the mice in your apartment, like that level of single. Yeah. Where you see a mouse scurry by and you're like, look at this stuff, isn't it neat? Like that level. <laughs> it's not cute anymore. <laughs> like, I was so single that I did a show the other day where I was like, who else here is single? And no one said anything. And I was like, <laughs> great! <laughs> is that low bearing? Like, it was so bad. <laughs> But it's hard because, like, I, who's here is in a relationship? Clap if you're in a relationship. Clap if you're happy about it. That was a tap. <laughs> that was a very, like, we just share Netflix. I don't know. They don't want to pay for two accounts. I just, I, because I want, I want to be in love. Like, I can't, like, and I can't find it. Like, you two are lucky if you found each other. Because, like, I feel like I keep finding the trash fucking people in New York City. There's so many garbage men here. So... 
so many. I once dated a guy who had eight roommates. Eight roommates. Are we fucking in a bus terminal? Like, what's happening? What is happening? This is how bad the dating scene is. I went to, um, was chatting with a guy who get Cupid, and he was like, wouldn't it be funny if we went on a date to McDonald's? And then we went on a date to McDonald's. That's how bad. You ever gone on a date to McDonald's? And then after, see, because you love yourselves. I get that. A bitch is over 30 and tired of paying for his own shit. Like, that's what happens. But the worst part is I wanted to do McDonald's and I had to pay for my own shit at McDonald's. That's rude. Aww. You get coupon books in the mail. Come on. I'm only getting a four piece Jesus. So like, I can't. I went on a date with this guy. And so this is what happened. So he, on the date, he was like, so I have to be honest with some things. I like, I'm out of jail. I was out of, I got, was in jail for selling crystal meth. Um, and technically I live in a halfway house. But then he said, but I have a master's degree. So I was like, well, all right, I'll leave you know, I'll connect. Like, <laughs> stupid. So we went on this date, we finished the date. Do you think I should have gone on another date with this guy? No. no. Good, because I went on three more. So <laughs> the date kept getting better. The second date was at Starbucks. I was like, thank you. <laughs> I was over a blonde roast. Thank you. <laughs> But I was really, I was going on the dates because like, uh, we like did not, like we didn't have sex until like date number four, which is like really good for me because I'm not a like date number four sex person. Like where I was, who here had sex on the first date? Good, <laughs> yeah, there's some hoes up in there. <laughs> like I'm the kind of person who like, I sleep with people before the first date. Like that's what I like. like I'll have sex with a guy and the next morning he'll be like, you want breakfast? I'm like, that's a date, thank you. <laughs> I will get a Western omelet. <laughs> so we went on four dates, and then we finally had sex, and I went to his halfway house of sex. I know, class. And <laughs> it was very awkward. <laughs> you have to live until you've had sex, and it went in front of a beaded curtain, because you're not allowed to have doors. So it's sort of a beaded curtain separating our lovemaking, very loosely stated, from someone loudly listening to Mori Povich. Like, it's very weird. <laughs> Whereas like, someone would be like, you're not the father of calling someone daddy. Like, it's very awkward. <laughs> and like, and here's the thing, he was very good at eating booty. I'm sorry to say like, ear muffs, but he was very good at eating booty. So we were like, you remember that Janae Aiko song, Eat the Booty Like Groceries? Yeah. yeah. It was like that, but he was eating it like it was good groceries. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is Whole Foods. Thank you very much. <laughs> this ain't associated. This ain't associated. <laughs> This ain't the Met. <laughs> this is Cinderella ass you have it. <laughs> I don't know, I'm trying to date better, cause like, uh, but my standards are so bad. My friend was like, I will find someone for you. What kind of guy are you looking for? And I literally said, someone who pays taxes. Like, that's why I'm, I'm just like, can I see a W-2? Can I see a W-2? I'll take a 1099. I'll take a 1099 at this point. Really don't care. <laughs> I don't know. Comedy is really fun, though. I've been able to travel a lot. Like, um, I did a show recently in a racist part of America um, called All of It. And uh, <laughs> I did the show. It was in Pennsylvania. And, uh, exactly. <laughs> Someone's been there. Because, like, they were like, oh, the town's called East in Pennsylvania. And they're like, it's the birthplace of Crayola. And I was like, not the brown colors, though. Uh, <laughs> it's not a last sepia in Easton. <laughs> So I went there, and the host of the show starts off the show by going, I hope you're not a PC audience. And then he drops an N-word at the top of the show. Like an E-R N-word, right? Not like an N-word with an A where I'm like, oh, we're in Paris. Like there's a hard E-R. <laughs> this ain't Kanye, oh no. And so I know, so I was laughing like real hard. Because the was like white, like white. Like they were so white, I thought someone came in my eye. Like it was very popular. <laughs> I was like, I'm wearing glasses. Like, I don't... We woke up. And it was, um... So I asked the booker, I was like, what's going on? This guy's dropping in where it's like, am I going to have to give a TED Talk? What's happening here? And he goes, I'm so sorry. It's because there's a lot of white power affiliates in the room. Let's break down the phrase white power affiliates. after white power like that makes it better. I was gonna go white power 
affiliate. Oh, they just fired you. Like that's not. <laughs> you guys have been excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs>